Analog filters differ completely from digital filters, both in the approach and in their form, although they are both intended to do the same thing, to filter out a certain frequency range and effectively suppress all the others. One difference is immediately noticeable. An analog filter is a circuit, usually with operational amplifiers and discrete components such as resistors and capacitors. It is hardware. By contrast, a digital filter is of virtual nature. That means a software which calculates from the string of numbers corresponding to the input signal another string of numbers corresponding to the filtered signal. This is software. The function of analog filters is based on the frequency dependent behavior of the components capacitor C and inductivity L. From a mathematical point of view, the relationship between the voltage and the current flowing through these two components is described by a differentiation or integration. From a theoretical point of view, analog filters are based on three processes. Differentiation and integration as frequency dependent processes and feedback control. Here you see again the behavior of a differentiated and integrated sweep signal. Sinusoidal oscillations of instantaneous changing frequencies. The principle of FFT filters is very easy to understand and was shown several times in the previous videos. The signal or a block of data is transformed into the frequency domain by means of a complex FFT transformation. The FFT module has only one input but two outputs. Both outputs provide the real and the imaginary part of the spectrum. In a physical sense, this means that two pieces of information are essential for any frequency and any sinusoidal signal. That means amplitude and phase. Subsequently, the frequencies are cut out using the cutout module. That means they are set at zero. These frequencies are not allowed to pass. The same values must be set on both channels, real and imaginary. Afterwards, you go back to the time domain via an inverse FFT. Finally, the output signal consists of the frequencies which have been allowed to pass through sinusoidal oscillations. That means a Fourier synthesis has to be carried out. This example of a bandpass filter shows the possible high quality of FFT filters. The criterion for a very good rectangular filter can be seen in the time domain. The pulse response looks roughly like an SI function multiplied by the mid frequency in case of this bandpass filter. The edge steepness is limited only by the uncertainty principle. That means by the length of the input signal 
string of numbers or data blocks in the time domain. Here it is, one second. The illustration above shows only a time segment of 250 milliseconds. You will now be introduced to digital filters which require little calculation which avoid the route via the frequency domain FFT and IFFT which in principle and in practice have no fixed block length signal length which for this reason can filter signals of any length directly which are completely phase linear which can be designed with the desired edge steepness the uncertainty principle is the only physical limit and which only need the three most elementary linear signaling processes addition multiplication by a constant and delay the idea is we know that the pulse response of a nearly rectangular filter that means a very good filter is an SI function therefore the pulse response of such a good digital filter is a discrete SI function as a digital signal consists purely of weighted delta pulses a signaling process is required which generates a discrete but time limited delta pulse sequence which is as similar as possible to the SI function from each of these delta pulses this is to be seen here there are four weighted delta pulses which represent a part of the signal in case of a rectangular like filter curve the pulse response of these four pulses have an SI shaped curve. You can see them here. As the overlapping, that means the addition of the discrete measurements corresponds to the instantaneous curve of the signal, the overlapping of their pulse responses must result in the instantaneous curve of the filtered signal. This filtered signal cannot change faster than the SI function. The ripple of the filtered signal shows the cutoff frequency of the filter. The whole process of digital filtering is now shown in the following demonstration. The input is a noise signal which is to be low pass filtered. In the block diagram, the convolution module represents the filter with a cutoff frequency of 80 Hz. The first impression is the filter works. Now the filter process is made transparent. Noise consists of random delta pulses of high frequencies. To see how the filter works, we take at first only one random delta pulse which represents the noise. You see the weighted pulse response, which depends on the instantaneous random noise pulse. By a simple trick, we can increase the number of random pulses. More and more pulse responses are to be seen, which are so far separated and don't overlap. When the frequency of the random pulses increases, the pulse responses begin to overlap. The more random pulses occur, the more the output signal approaches filtered noise.
Now the principle of digital FIR filters should be clear. Our last task is to find the filter coefficients of the desired filter in an easy manner. Here is a solution. A simple filter development system which creates a string of filter coefficients. The formula module creates a discrete SI shaped function. The number string in the list module represent the filter coefficients of the shown SI function. This discrete SI function is now transformed into the frequency domain. The slider enables the change of the shape of the SI function, that means the bandwidth of the spectrum. Therefore, you can get the coefficients of the filter type desired. But there is a very important fact to consider. This filter development system has a sample rate of, for example, 64 values per second. The bandwidth of the low pass filter in the illustration may be 5 Hz. If your desired filter system acts with a sample rate, of 64,000 values per second, the bandwidth is 5,000 Hz because it runs 1,000 times faster. Keep always in mind the uncertainty principle. 